Dave. Oh, Dave. What is it, Orb? I just got notified that I missed out on being in the Peacemaker TV show as a sidekick. What's going on? Oh, I'm sorry about that, Orb. They were buried underneath my past due notices. <sighs> I could have been a star. <sighs> you got a show to put on. Okay, I'll be right there. Don't mind me. I'm going to go cry myself to sleep. Man, I could have worked with John Cena. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's this Justin News Comedy Club show with your very special guest stars, Regina Weinmiller, Hardis Parker, Bo Johnson, Paula Maddox, and your headliner, Charlotte Parker, with co-host Christine Knowlton. And now without further ado, the Master of Ceremonies, the Randy Savage of Puppets, Please welcome A.A. Ron! Yay! Ray! He's no John Cena. It's not very nice. I, uh, <laughs> I, I pay his freaking... I give him the big back every day. He's telling me I'm no John Cena? Okay, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I've been hooked on that Peacemaker TV show, so uh, that was an awesome show. I am now a fan of uh, John Cena because he has some range, and he can play the piano, which is a lot more than I can do. I can pay for a piano if you want me to, but I really don't want to. All right. <laughs> uh, beyond me just kind of rambling here, I want to welcome to the stage my co-host for tonight. Please give it up for Christine Knowlton, everybody. Come on up, Christine. Hi! <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to be here. We have an amazing lineup of comedians tonight. Yes, we do. We have a great, great set of comedians, all handpicked by me, not Juan Valdez. No, no. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, maybe that's a too old of a reference. I know I'm old. I know I'm old. You know, this, this is, as of Monday, I will be married seven years. Yes. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. I like the free. You know what my wife's doing for this weekend? She is off scrapbooking with her girlfriends. So I don't know. I guess that's the <laughs> gift that keeps on giving. She doesn't have to listen to my comedy. I'm not sure, but that's. Oh, nice. oh yeah. I, <laughs> I always make her laugh when I come to bed naked. She did laugh at me completely. I mean, like, she rolls off the bed laughing like, oh, that's never touching me ever again. I'm like, no. Thanks, honey. That's the only time. Uh, but anyways, we have a great, great set of comedians. And we're going to get up to this first comedian. She is so funny. Let's give it up for Regina Weinmiller, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, my name is Regina. And it was awkward when there was a substitute teacher in middle school calling roll. Regina? <laughs> Regina? Is there a Regina here? I'm thinking there's probably several. <laughs> I'm a mom and I was tucking my little girl in the other night. She said, mom, I love you 26. I said, oh, honey, I love you 27. She said, mom, I love you 28. I said, oh, that's so sweet. Honey, I love you 29. She said, mom, I love you 28. <laughs> <laughs> the other day she said to me, mom, are we rich? I said, no, but we're happy. She said, mom. We can be happy with money. <laughs> wish, wish I would have thought of that years ago. <laughs> uh, and she's always mixing up her words. Uh, she told me that she played a game of hot tomato. And I thought that would just be a way harder game, right? <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody told me when I became a parent that my sleep was going to be jacked up for years. Yeah. I, uh, other night I heard a noise that woke me up outside my window. So I just grabbed my phone and posted giant bang 2.15 a.m. on Facebook and went back to sleep. Because I figured <laughs> if I get murdered, at least I'm leaving the first clue. <laughs> <laughs> That's how tired I am. Oh. oh, my iPhone is so inaccurate. It will buzz at me like, uh, you spent six hours of screen time yesterday. And I'm like, it doesn't even know how much I watch TV. Mm. <laughs> no. And my Apple Watch, it'll pop up like, if you do a 20-minute jog, you can still reach your move goal. I'm like, bitch, I'm on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about my first time. Um traveling alone. Mm. I, uh, I was only 18 and I made a bad choice. I took a drug I'd never tried before. Mm. Street name, X-Lax. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it didn't work. So I took more. No, no, no. Oh. Oh. And, <laughs> and then the next day, <laughs> Oh. On the airplane, oh no! <laughs> I um, heard the gurgle. Oh. I was like, oh, 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 "Oh no!" And so I was just sitting there, hoping I could pass some gas and maybe the seat would absorb it. Girl, no, <laughs> no. The seat wasn't having it. Oh, it was like, <laughs> oh god, oh, oh my god. Oh, please let the plane go down so I can be used as a flotation device. Uh, and I, I kept trying to pass it off like, um, it's that guy. Nobody believed it because I kept running to the bathroom. That is a different kind of mile high club. Mm hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told that story. I told that story my first time at an open mic. And there was a guy on the front row. He said, that makes me feel better about my shit story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm already doing some good with my comedy. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you never know. He could have been sitting there thinking about ending it all. And I get up there and tell my story about that. And he decides to hold on to hope for another damn day. <laughs> <laughs> like if that lady's still out there walking around, maybe I'm okay too. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, some people like to make an itinerary, a list of things they want to see when they travel, but I make bingo cards. I went to New York recently and I saw uh, the Statue of Liberty. Check. I saw Times Square. Check. Mm. And I saw a woman posing as the Statue of Liberty in Times Square mm. and she was naked. Check, check. <laughs> and i saw the naked cowboy mm. i saw a rat crossing the street and then my friend who lives in new york said uh oh mg i'm so glad you're not with me i just passed a guy on the sidewalk checking off oh. and i said damn it that would have been my bingo <laughs> so I was trying to act like I'm not a tourist, right? And my friend said, don't be looking at the buildings. That's a dead giveaway. So um, I'm looking at buildings like a guy tries to peek at cleavage. Like, oh, look at those. Oh, oh, they're so beautiful. Oh, I want to get right in the middle of them. 
<laughs> Thank you. That's my time. All right. Let's Ooh. give it up for Regina Weinmiller. We will not call her what, uh, what her teacher called her, called the substitute called her. And Regina, where can we find you on social media? I am Regina W. Comedy on Facebook and Instagram and uh, soon to be TikTok. Ooh, the Tiki Talk. Yeah. As old people say, it's the Tiki Talk. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You got any shows coming up? Uh, let's see. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. No. <laughs> Well, there's a, you know, a plenty of other things Gotta be going honest. on. We could, I'm sure she'll be on something soon, guys. So go check her out. Go check her out on our social media. And thank you so much, Regina, for being on the show. Thank you. Yes, I love it. And you know what? I, I, I went to Washington, D.C. with my wife last year. And I did see a senator cross the street. <laughs> but my wife said it was just a rat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just I just, well, he was on all fours and running around. I don't know, maybe maybe it was a rat. I don't know. I just I didn't get my bingo filled out either that day. That's just, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> all right, let's get on with our our show tonight and let's get to our second comedian coming to us. Please give it up for Pardis Parker, everybody. Woo, woo, woo. Hey. hey, hello everyone. I feel uh, so uh, like I, like everyone else got their uniforms for the X Men, and I didn't because I don't have the same background. So I'm just like, oh god, You're like Wolverine out here. Um, it's a joke for all the X Men fans. I'm uh, apparently is one of you, <laughs> the rest of you. <laughs> like if you could update your references please to something that i would also appreciate, I'd appreciate. i'm uh terrified of being rich terrified of terrified of being the type of person who spends lavishly on himself while the people around me suffer you know and people are like oh well you know you don't have to be like that you can be different you can be generous when you're rich and it's just like yo i'm not generous now like, that's not going to change just because you give me money. You know what I mean? It's just like, I just get away with it now because no one is suspicious of the guy in the produce section debating whether he should splurge on a honey crisp apple. You know what I mean? Like, no one looks at the guy trying to calculate if the eight pack or 12 pack is a better deal and assumes that they're a bad person. Uh, give that same guy a billion dollars and they'll find out. Let's walk into your home. You'd be like, man, this is a lot of name brand Cheerios. <clears throat> Thank you, Amira, for... Uh, <laughs> 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 What's funny, that's the third time I've done that joke and the first two times I was like, all right, maybe this joke has potential. And uh, tonight, I think we've conclusively <laughs> found out that it does not. It is... Uh, that entire oh. joke needs to be thrown out. Um, uh, 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 I'm, I am terrified. I'm terrified of, uh, of being rich. I'm terrified of looking down on people, you know, and like feeling superior to people. This is a true story. I was, uh, I live in LA. I went out uh, for brunch uh, the other day because even though I'm poor, my Instagram demands that I live fabulously. So, uh, I went out for brunch and we're sitting on the patio. <clears throat> Uh, we go to sit down. Before we get a chance to order, uh, we realize the table next to us is making fun of this panhandler that's on the street. And uh, and then we're trying to figure out what we should do. But then the guy at the table gets up, he makes this big show of it, and he gives the guy money. And he goes like loudly, like, all right, I'm giving this money on the condition that you go away. And if you don't, I'm going to beat you up. And I was just like, first of all, no, you're not. <laughs> Second of all, that's who you want to challenge? The guy who literally has nothing to lose? <laughs> that's the guy that you want to challenge to the fight? You can't deal with anything less than three-ply, and you want to challenge the guy who survives on the streets? <laughs> <laughs> Like that's the that's the problem, man. Being rich is that it makes you arrogant, it makes you think that you can beat people up just because you drive an entry level Porsche. <laughs> not how that works, you know. If I see the two of those guys fighting, my money's not going on the guy who owns a regional chain of Dairy Queens. 
thank you, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> so he gives the guy money. The guy goes away. And after he leaves, they continue making fun of him and uh, making faces. And then they look at us and they go, right? And I was just like, that's not how that works. Like, you can't get away with classism just because you get someone next to you to co-sign it. <laughs> like, like, I can't murder someone, then look at someone on the street and be like, am I right? <laughs> and then just because they, like, awkwardly nod, I can be like, oh, I guess I've got a clear conscience for the day. That murder was totally justified. Like, no, that's not, <laughs> not how that works, man. Terrified, terrified of being rich. I don't understand people that want to be rich too. I, I find that like a, a big part of like of like wanting to be wealthy is so that you can isolate yourself from poor people, right? That's, that's all it is. Just like insulate. It's creating a buffer between you and and people that you don't want to be around. It's gated community, uh, communities. It's members only clubs. It's it's dress codes that keep poor people on whatever. And it's just like like. The worst thing that you can do in a prison is put someone in isolation. And that's what rich people are doing to themselves intentionally. I think that explains why so many rich people are crazy, you know? Like these are people who look at Tom Hanks and Castaway and are just like, man, that guy's got it made. You're just like, no, that's not. <laughs> I think you're misreading the situation. I'm terrified. Terrified of being rich. I think the, other, the funny thing is the, 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 one of the reasons why people want to be rich is because they want to create generational wealth. You know, and it's just like I don't understand why you would do that to your kids. You know, it's like you know who has generational wealth, the queen. You know whose kids I don't admire, the queens. <laughs> <laughs> like I've never looked at Prince Andrew and thought I really respect his worldview. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it's like, oh, you're cherry picking. I mean, not all children of rich people become bad people who commit crime. Some children of rich people become good people who fight crime. And it's just like, yeah, but what you're just describing is Bruce Wayne. Like, is that what you want for your kids? To become Bruce Wayne, an adult who dresses as a bat? <laughs> it's like why why oh because he was bitten by a radioactive bat it's like no nah, no nah, just because he likes bats <laughs> no one around him could say anything without jeopardizing their paycheck <laughs> hey, Alfred. Hey, Alfred, what do you think of this sweet bat costume yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah super cool master bruce super cool <laughs> I'll, just, I'll, I'll end on this it's it, what's funny about the whole uh, bruce wayne thing is that the reason he became batman batman is because he fell into a cave filled with bats how lucky is he that the cave had bats in it because otherwise you'd fall into the cave you're like hey alfred i fell into a cave and i've decided to become a superhero called stalactite man <laughs> <laughs> Oh, criminals, you better not run into me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to hurt. Uh, that's all my time. I have to go. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good night. All right. Let's give it up for Parker, everybody. And Pardis, where can we find you on social media? Uh, uh, at Pardis Parker. On everything, huh? On everything, except for things that I'm not on. <laughs> well, that's helpful. <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, uh, so. Look for him on MySpace, uh, <laughs> <laughs> WhatsApp, I'm not sure. Uh, you guys, show's coming up, Pardis. No, it's me and uh, me and, and Regina just out here in the. <laughs> yeah. in the I, I'm glad I got some. Yes. I'm glad I got you guys when you weren't really working. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, uh, I, I was thinking about his joke. Entry level Porsche. Isn't that just a Volkswagen bug? I mean, if you really look at that darn bug and you stretch it out a little bit, it's a Porsche. Okay, they just went and and it's a Porsche. Mm -hmm. Like they yeah, took a what? suppository and make it a Porsche. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got it. That's why the new bug didn't work because everybody's like, it looks kind of like a baby Porsche. And that's why it didn't sell. Oh, <laughs> what fun. What fun. Mm -hmm. We're having a great time tonight, aren't we? Mm -hmm. well, 
You know what? And this comedian, I've known him for a while, and I was had we've someone, laughed together. We've cried together. I know it's been it's been so so touching, man. And he gave me investment advice, and all of a sudden, I lost everything. <laughs> Watching. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Please welcome to the stage, my friend Bo Johnson, everybody. I gotta Woo! say, you know, the sad part with the bug is that's what you get when you trust a German to recreate an Italian, you know? Uh, it, it, it just blows up in everybody's faces, you know? Yeah, um, true. Volkswagen is actually like the last curse Hitler ever gave to the world. There, no. mm. a, yep. a, a whole <laughs> lifetime of punch bug from your older siblings you know that's his legacy you know punch bug, punch uh, bug. anyways <laughs> uh, as he said my name is Bo, and uh that is french for beautiful mm. as you can mm-hmm. tell i don't live up to my potential so there you go <laughs> uh, my last name is johnson and uh, which apparently is slang for penis so my parents gave me a porn name <laughs> penis like what was pretty peter was just taken up or what you know <laughs> i was like mom why did you give me this name because i got tired of it. she's like oh well i was gonna name you zach but your grandfather wanted wolfgang so Bo was the compromise no that's when the drugs kicked in Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, the hard part with the name Bo Johnson is I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. That's the era of Bo Jackson. That's not fair. Mm-hmm. That was an intelligent, athletic, good looking black man. I was this scrawny, freckle faced white kid trying to not get my ass kicked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, does Bo know how to run? You're damn right I do. <laughs> I'm sure we all remember those Nike commercials. Bo knows this and Bo knows that. I heard that stuff all the time. Like my parents, does Bo know how to clean his room? <laughs> Even the pastor at church got into it. Does Bo know his Bible verses? No, <laughs> <he's not. laughs> Does Bo know how to pick a better team than the Cowboys? Not in his household. <laughs> luckily, I, luckily, I grew up and I found a better team. So, you know, anyways. Uh, yeah, you know, that, that, that was a lot of crap. <sighs> Let's see what else we want to talk about here. You know, it, it, I grew up an only child because my mom gave my sister up for adoption. And uh, which says my mom loved my sister more than me. Um, uh, Mom didn't find that funny either. Uh, <laughs> I was tortured because, like, my my sister had to grow up with like professor parents on a Hawaiian island, so she got like part of Gilligan's Island. And uh, I got two hippies in a trailer park in California. Mm. <laughs> One of these things doesn't belong here. Uh. But I, I will say I got out of the trailer park, so I'm now I'm just like white recycled, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when she was like 18, my sister found us, you know. She found us. That was great, mm. which makes my mom like a champion of hide and go seek. <laughs> <laughs> but like the first time I met my sister, I was like, what do I do with this? Do I hug her? Do I shake her hand? Then my brotherly instincts kicked in and I pulled her hair. She kicked me in the balls. And, oh, God. Ow. We were we are like two complete polar opposite people who can come together to annoy mom to death. Mm. You know, it's like the Avengers, but worse, you know. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Like we really wanted to know who our father was. We really wanted to know. And we like, mom, you tell us, mom, tell us. And then she did the most unthinkable thing. She started the whole hide and go seek game over again by moving to Arkansas. Whoa. <laughs> so we got that whole 23 and me thing, or as I like to now call it, the Mori Povich home game. <laughs> Anybody ever do that 23 and me thing? 
That's mm. a that's a spitful of TMI, you know? Mm. Like it told us you have separate fathers, but it came from the trains, the same truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> you got some splaining to do. Mm. <clears throat> My sister actually won the game. She uh, she got her father and and an inheritance and that one thing. Um, what's it called? Oh, love, love. That's what. Oh, it was. Yeah. oh. <laughs> we did that four years ago. My participation trophy showed up last August uh, mm. in the form of two more siblings. Whoa, whoa! Uh, you know the, the 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 bad thing was is like I have one picture of my father, right? And it turns out my brother inherited my father's looks mm. and my new sister inherited the ability to uh, not show up. <laughs> I just inherited a picture. <laughs> yeah. oh. I really didn't know what to do with a new brother. Like, it was like, God, now what do I do? <laughs> Luckily, I remember well, I pulled his hair, you know, <laughs> in my ass. I'm not doing very good with these siblings. I don't know what to do. Mm. Like I grew up all the time. Like I want siblings. I want siblings. And all my friends would be like, here, have mine. (laughs) 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 What do you do with that? You know, I got, I got, you know, I said, I grew up in a trailer park with hippies and I I gotta say growing up with hippies ruins your life because you Mm. just grow up around drugs. You're like, yeah, I'm good. You know, like weed was everywhere in our house. It was constantly everywhere. Like anytime my dad pulled the can out of his his weed can out from underneath the couch, the cat would go running down the hallway and then jump up on the couch to wait in his turn in the rotation. You know, puff, puff. Meow. (laughs) There's nothing like after the whole passing puffing thing, you're like, and mm-hmm. it's sad my dad meows in his sleep and you know mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i don't know if you gave me the light or not if you flashed oh, yeah. me or not you know i know we're right. close but we're not that close um getting close getting close yeah uh i gotta tell you like when you grow up in that kind of lifestyle like all those conversations i think most teenagers got i think it was a little different for me like the whole drug situation you know my dad would be like just remember if you ever drop acid Put on some Pink Floyd. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Or like, he's like, I will kick your ass if I see you doing cocaine and not sharing. (laughs) Dude, I don't know how to deal with that one, you know. Uh, Lord, even the sex talk was weird because it's like, I don't know how that was supposed to. I have a teenage son. I still don't know how the sex talk goes. It was like my sex talk was in a boat fishing. It was like, remember, if you ever break up with your girlfriend, make sure you keep the porn tape. <laughs> That's why I got the porn name. <laughs> yeah, I am Bo Johnson. Thank you. All right. Let's give it up to Bo Johnson, everybody. Oh my gosh. So funny. Bo, where can we find you on social media? At B, wherever my name tag is, there, there, somewhere at B Johnson Comedy. That's on all social medias, Cash Apps, Venmos. Throw some coin. Um, oh, you, throw some. Yeah, just don't. Oh, he wants money. Hardest, hardest. He wants money. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll tell. Hey, look. I one time ran into a homeless guy who was asking for money, and I said, "I do. I don't carry cash." He was like, "I have Cash App." What? Mm-hmm. Swear to God. The homeless guy was begging me for money. He's like, I don't have any. He's like, well, yeah, I have cash out. My, my, uh, my, the the homeless are begging me in the Kroger, inside the Kroger. And they have a better phone than I do. I mean, they have the latest iPhone. I mean, come on. Wow. Always look at the shoes, dude. Always look at the shoes. Yes. So, but Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any shows coming up, Bo? Uh, I see. I'm in Gastonia, North Carolina next weekend. I'm going to be in Columbia or is it Columbia? Somewhere outside of Baltimore, Maryland in May. Mm. Uh, so I am on going on every state. Eventually I'll get to Michigan as soon as Aaron brings me into Michigan. Um, sure. Oh, I will put, I'll put you at up at the motel six on eight mile where I put them where I put people when they uh, get revealed, like the mysterious comedian judge, that's where they get to be. You know, so. That almost sounded like revealed, like, dude, we're not doing nightline here. 
well, you know, on that game, and Bo Johnson's been on that game, and Christine Knowlton's been on that game. If you know, that's a fun game, and, and I, a lot of people can vouch for that one. That's where three comedians. Now it's going to be two for the dogfight edition. Two comedians compete, do three minute sets now, and the mysterious comedian judge decides who's Joker Ace. And uh, I always keep the comedian and my sergeant at arms. Uh, they're anonymous people because I don't want people hunting them down going, hey, I didn't win. You know what? It's for fun, okay? If there was real money involved, then why am I involved? Because that means I'm rich. <laughs> and I'm not- so if you if you lose and you bomb hard, so hard, do you get the, the name of Kamikaze? Hmm. I haven't thought about that, but... You've destroyed honest- my room. You're now the Kamikaze. Oh, yes. I guess I could, but uh, it's all for fun, but... Stay tuned in the next couple months. I am working out the details to do this live bombing run out in Phoenix, Arizona. So if anyone is out in that direction and you know me and I know you, uh, we're trying to figure out what we're doing with that. That's what she said. Stay tuned for that. Yes, me live doing bombing run. That should be interesting. The whole the whole general mm. A.A. Ron outfit actually wearing the pants because I've worn the pants once. And because it's That's Zoom, insane. you don't need to see the whole top and bottom. I'm always wearing jogging pants for these shows. I mean, just why, why, do, why, do, why get dressed up for everything, shall we? <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> oh, but you know what? Let's get to our oh. next comedian. She is, yes. she is doing this from her car, but she is so awesome to be on the show tonight. Let's give it up for Paula Maddox, everybody. Woo, 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 woo. Hello, hello. Woo. Yeah. Man, well, first I gotta give my thank yous to, to Mr. Aaron. Thank you so much for doing this for all of his comics. I mean, I, I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you. Sorry for this posted up by a busted up old auto park store in the middle of Oakyville. <laughs> yeah. So my apologies. Um, but no, my addiction wants to thank you very much too for all the comedy venues because because I'm so addicted to comedy, man. And this Zoom comedy ticks all the boxes, you guys. It's so nice. <laughs> yeah. And I figure, you know, it's good for me to put all my intentions into a healthy addiction, you know, because um, like the last time I let an addiction sneak up on me, it was donuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cool to be addicted to donuts, you guys. Let me just tell you, from this side of the fence, it's not cool. You know, it couldn't have been sex or whoring around or, you know, drugs. It was donuts. <laughs> <laughs> in my defense, um, in my small town, there's a 24-hour donut shop. 24 hours, you guys. Like, that's wow. not fair not fair even the crack house that runs on the opposite corner it knows to shut its son up like <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got to give dumb humans a chance to regenerate you know we need a rest before we keep going but yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's a that's a dumb true story about really being addicted to donuts and i know it seems like a cliche but it just happens spontaneously um but that's trauma i found out so hey i'm not too fucked up oh excuse me i'm not too messed up i'm just trying to you know survive yeah (laughs) but i should tell you guys i'm really super dumb i just found out for real for proof like because i accidentally locked myself up forever (laughs) on purpose yeah when i decided to get married and have kids you know (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> man i was so young and dumb and full of all kind of bad ideas you know but luckily i married the kid's dad so my monsters aren't bastards oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank god and all my kids have the same dad so you know i'll always have that <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know and none of my sisters could do that so i win <laughs> 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 yeah. You know, they can't unscramble those eggs. They just can't. So. <laughs> it's good. No, I try to warn people about the dangers of parenting if you haven't done it to yourself yet, because, you know, it is voluntary, really. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, there's a lot of warning signs I missed for myself, like right there in the word motherhood is the word hood. 
<laughs> that hurt when it hit. Can I tell you guys? Like, it's been there forever. <laughs> it's um, but like a good hood, most um, real hoods have gangs. Because um, like in the motherhood, when you make more than one kid, you make your own dumb thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only made the second the second kid because the first kid needed a playmate. Because <laughs> 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 mommy didn't realize how long 24 hours a day is, you guys. It's so <laughs> long. <laughs> and then it goes on forever. It's just nuts. It's just nuts, man. <sighs> no, but I am like living that locked up life. I, I looked around recently and I, I, I did lock myself up. I, I don't need bars though. So that's kind of weird, you know, but that's institutionalization. You know, it's just, you get stuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like a good jail, you know, there's lots of innocent people running around. My poor kids. <laughs> 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 They're locked up with me and they don't even know. <laughs> No, it'll be all right. We just got to survive each other, you know. Um, mm. I have three kids. I like to call them my domestic products, you know, because. <laughs> yeah. I got <laughs> to be careful not to slip and say gross domestic products because it's not their fault. <laughs> <laughs> Poor kids. No, I'm actually raising six kids um, because I think the creator likes my parenting style because he gave me more kids <laughs> you know yeah either that or he's with me and that's not cool <laughs> you know <laughs> likes to see me squirm or something I don't know we'll figure it out one day I'll be like dude what's up he's like man did you have a good time I'm like you know it wasn't half bad here I'm sitting in the car doing a zoom show on my way to, to do a whole bunch of fun comedy things so you know life ain't too bad <laughs> Ain't too bad. Yeah, I'm on a furlough. Actually, when I think about it, it's like a real prison furlough, you know, because I, I left the penitentiary. Yeah, that, that's what I call my home now. Penitentiary. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. The kids just texted me and told me that um, the power is out at home. Oh, I paid the bill. It's not the bill for once. Like, I didn't even have to. It's pretty stoked, man. Because, you know, adulting's hard and expensive. Mm -hmm. Really expensive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this is the first time I've done stand-up sitting down in a car. It's odd. Can I tell you? I'm getting distracted. It's like, squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> uh, good chapter in the book, though. So, you know. But um, So for the people who haven't done that, the parenting thing yet i i do like to say that it's it's like a form of black magic um because in the beginning you know it has chanting in the moaning because before you you have those kids you're like please please i want a baby <laughs> you know and then you make that monster and you go oh my god what did i do then you're moaning and groaning you know <laughs> and this second thing is sacrifice you know you sacrifice all your good parts to make those kids turn out mm. yeah parts yeah. didn't even know you know, it's crazy, yeah. crazy. And then the, the last thing is offerings, you know, because you offer up your literal DNA for this job. That's huge. It's mm -hmm. cosmic. You know, also tie those dumb butts to your butt for the rest of your days. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful. Pick the right pole, you know, because you don't know which one's going to be the worst one till later. Gosh. Got to be safe, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I think I uh, I think there's a very good reason that they don't put pregnancy on the list of STDs. I think I think it's so Mother Nature can catch her fools faster. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you, but but my my STDs will last longer than I will. And that's pretty power powerful, you know. Oh, I never I never got a real STD, but I got three kids. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> and I had been worn. But and because I'm a weirdo, I think, do other STDs talk back as bad as mine do? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh. Oh. Yeah, when I look around, I look at all these homes and I think, how much? How many of these are parent entries? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. 
<laughs> yeah, the poor kid's at home. I already called, called the neighbor and had him send over a, a, a extension cord, you know, because I they need their electronics because I'm not coming home. So. <laughs> <laughs> the littles are off school this week and my young adults are at home adulting on their own. <laughs> poor kids. Mm. It's bad for them. I'm so sorry. <laughs> hey, I also... I, uh, they're lucky kids, you know. I, I chose early on in my motherhood to not spank the kids. You know, mm. it was loud and proud. Yeah. Came out, told the whole family, I'm not going to spank them. You know, my mom's like, you got to mess it up. <laughs> like, mess what up? Like, oh, my God. It's like, why do you think the cr- creator put a crack in all our butts, honey? <laughs> Even he knew that we would need to be spanked from time to time and that's what, you know help absorb the blow <sighs> young and dumb and then my dad says well you know if, if you're not going to spank him it's going to take you he's right you guys but the only reason I didn't be so embarrassing to be missed on a little three-year-old you know he's supposed to be smart and big big adult but yeah anyways thank you guys so much I had such a great time and then and, and this is one for the memory books thank you guys so much have a good day oh. all right Woo! let's give it up for Paul and Maddox and luckily, she was pulled off the side of the road to do this, right? You weren't driving yeah, in yeah. comedy. Oh, good, good. That's that's always scary. I know of a truck driver who does his comedy, and sometimes you're just watching him with that steering wheel just flying down the road, and they're always concerned. Uh, so what show are you doing tonight? I am just traveling today, but um, I have a guest spot in uh, Walnut Creek on uh, tomorrow, and then another one on Wednesday. And then I'm going to do mics for the whole week, yeah. Uh, where can we find you on social media? You can finally find me at Paula Comedy on Twitter and Instagrams, I believe. And uh, I'm doing my first headlining gig in, in April in San Luis Obispo. So, Sweet. Go check Ooh. that out. You're out in California. Yes. Go check that out. It's awesome. Thank you, Paula. She's been on the show a lot. I really appreciate you coming in. And I, I love it to death. Yeah, she is so funny. Oh, she is. She is. Oh, my gosh. Although I do have to say it's like I was spanked as a kid and damn, that just sent my fetishes up in flames. Oh, I, no. I love being spanked. It's great. It's very- <laughs> no, 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 my dad didn't need a, a stick. He didn't need a, He didn't need anything else. He had calluses on top of calluses. I thought he was Iron Man. Oh, wham. <laughs> I mean, dear Lord. <laughs> then I found out, no, that's not Iron Man. I'm like, well, why did I buy the comic? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's get up to our headliner tonight she's a very funny comedian please give it up for charlotte parker everybody Woo! Woo! hello everyone i uh, got my hair chopped off so i'm wearing the exact same dress that i have in my head shot because i'm so unrecognizable with this hair change oh, really <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> uh, people tend to assume that I'm Irish Catholic and straight when I'm actually Jewish queer and depressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in the comedy world, I am a triple threat, which is nice. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yes. I am in fact a ginger Jew, which scientists have officially classified as critically endangered. Mm. Um, <laughs> thoughts and prayers. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, or I'll leave my Venmo if you want to donate to the cause. Stick us, keep us <laughs> sticking around. Uh, I, uh, growing up, um, I, I noticed this trend with Jewish holidays. Most of them have the same basic backstory, which is, hey, remember when, that time when this group of people tried to kill us and they mostly failed? You do? Okay, good. Let's eat. That's it. That's every Jewish holiday in a nutshell. We're still alive. Let's stuff our face. Um, <laughs> Passover is a little different. Passover is a, hey, remember that time your ancestors escaped from slavery and then wandered through a desert for 40 years? And, oh, you do? Because we talk about this every year. Cool. Well, we're still going to talk about it for what feels like about five hours to young kids um, while you stare at this food that you're not allowed to eat until we're done. Um, mm-hmm. And then after that, while all your Christian friends are frolicking in a meadow uh, looking for eggs and eating candy, you kids can all hunt for the Afi Komen, which is this dry, stale cracker that we've hidden in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> oh, wow. <Happy> Passover. <laughs> uh not that I'm bitter or anything. Um, <laughs> I uh I also found out that some anti-Semitic people like to call us Jews cockroaches. 
And I actually kind of like that though, because other people have been trying to exterminate us since the dawn of time, hence every Jewish holiday. I mean, like the Inquisition, the Crusades, even the dinosaurs were convinced that the Stegosteins controlled the meteor. <laughs> like no matter what just like cockroaches we keep crawling back out of that woodwork like ha ha we're still here we are the chosen people let's go convince <laughs> everyone to get circumcised and like we scurry away <laughs> <laughs> that's the real jewish agenda by the way if any of you didn't know um we're not <laughs> uh, we just want every man in the world to chop part of uh his groin off for no mm. reason um, <laughs> been weirdly successful at it so far uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <what>? another um <laughs> another fun fact about me is i went to a boarding school for high school mm. um I tell people that usually one of two reactions um if they're from the northeast where i grew up and went to school they look at me like oh okay someone's loaded uh, but if I tell someone down here in Texas where I live now that I went to a boarding school, they look at me like, oh, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Either I have a trust fund or I committed arson, apparently. Um, <laughs> guess which it was. People tend to guess arson. I- I'm not I'm not sure why uh, if it's the red hair. But I'll leave it a mystery. Um, it was my <laughs> if you want to hear about it later. But... <laughs> I also, I went to an all girls boarding school, which people hear that and they're like, okay, so that's how you found out you were queer, right? And yeah, but not right away. I mean, it took me like a whole week to figure it out. (laughs) 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 That was very stereotypical. Um, Also very closeted for my first few years there. Uh, I was so far back in the closet that I actually found Narnia at one point. (laughs) (laughs) It was cool though. No, I got to hang out with the white witch, try her Turkish delights. It was a good time. But um, uh, I remember I was zoning out uh, in my English class once and I was just known as this awkward theater kid. What shocking, I know. And uh, <laughs> no one who knows me is shocked by that statement. But I was zoning out in English class. My teacher sees me not paying attention and he goes, hey, Charlotte, you're a thespian, right? And I was like, what? How did you? Thespian. I. Uh, Yes. <laughs> I, 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 never zoned out in that class again. Um, he he was a strange teacher, that one. I remember I um he, I walked into class one time, it was freshman English, and I guess he was in a rhyming mood. because so he just looks at me and he goes, Charlotte the starlet was a harlot. And I said, What's a harlot? And he goes, A prostitute. And I was like, Cool, I'm 14. And then I sat down and Oh, <laughs> very strange. Yeah. Um, <laughs> any of y'all fans of that movie when Harry met Sally? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 I kind of have some beef with it, to be honest. Um, the main message of that movie, um, and I guess spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen it, um, <laughs> but tough because it's been out for many years. But mm-hmm. the main message of that movie is that men and women can't uh, be close friends without eventually wanting to sleep with each other. I mean, that's the whole movie is just back and forth. Yes, they can. No, they can't. And then Billy Crystal wins because they sleep together and they end up getting married, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't like that message because uh, I'm bisexual. So by that logic, I can't have any close friends. (laughs) (laughs) Don't really think that's fair. (laughs) Uh, My family uh, is very active. Um, they've been especially active during, you know, since the whole quarantine started, um, my mom and sister like to do a lot of Zumba classes, but it's on zoom. So it's Zumba. Yeah. And (laughs) (laughs) my dad, uh, likes to go on the elliptical a lot. Um, I like baking things and then eating them. That's kind of been my main activity Mm -hmm. really work (laughs) up a sweat when you're standing next to a hot oven. But, um, (laughs) (laughs) My uh, my sister was doing a Zumba class recently and my mom uh, tried to very subtly kind of point out the good example that she was setting that I could maybe follow. Um, and I was in the kitchen baking. So my mom comes into the room, looks over at my sister and goes, hey, Charlotte, look, your sister's doing a Zumba class. Isn't that great, honey? And she looks over and I'm mid licking brownie batter off of a whisk. Like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just working on my tongue muscles. 
I work at a daycare right now and um it, it's interesting it's fun um i have the crack of dawn shift so that's been an adjustment um mm. i also uh work in the uh, room with the babies a lot uh which is oh. great um we had one baby though who was relatively new and would not stop crying i mean we checked to make sure he was fed changed his diaper like nothing would get this kid from like wailing really loudly and so i thought well maybe he's just tired and so I held him, let him rest his head on my shoulder. He kind of nuzzles his face into my neck. I'm all, and I get this warm feeling. And then that warm feeling continued down my shirt and onto my pants. (laughs) Turned out it was spit up, not love. (laughs) Uh, It soaked through my pants and through my underwear in milliseconds while I was holding this baby. And yeah, just a biblical flood of spit up. And you know, <laughs> if you told me I'm going to put down the imaginary baby now, but uh, if you, I'm so committed to my <laughs> proper, if you told me a few months ago that I was going to find a job where I would be getting my panties wet at 7:30 in the morning, mm-hmm. I don't know. I would have pictured something a little different. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I also work at a children's theater because I'm a sucker for punishment. No, I'm kidding. I love it. Uh, um, <laughs> but when I say that after the daycare, I get some concerned looks, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I teach acting classes to uh, kindergartners, uh, which is great because they still have no filter whatsoever. At that age. <laughs> yeah. Like um, uh, when I was going over the rules the first day of a summer camp, And I got to rule number three, keep your hands and feet to yourself. So I turn to the kids. I say, so what does that mean? This girl in the back, she raises her hand immediately. Ooh, ooh. So I call on her and she goes, no kicking people in the vagina. (laughs) (laughs) Like, okay, you've definitely kicked someone in the vagina recently. Uh, (laughs) I was just going to say no kicking, full stop. Kind of thought that was (laughs) But apparently not. Um, so just in case, I've added some vaginal addendums or vagendums to all of the class rules. <laughs> <laughs> like a no shouting in the vagina. No, no in the vagina. It's a bad idea. Uh, cough or sneeze in your elbow, not your vagina. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, sharing the vagina is caring. You know, I think that's an important lesson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of my students uh, came up to me once, uh, beginning of a class, poked me in the stomach and said, is that a baby? Ooh. My first thought was, no, it's an adult with feelings, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I should talk to her about this before she ruins some other woman's day. So mm. took a deep breath, knelt down, so I was on her level. And I said, listen, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) This actually was a baby, but you just poked a hole right through it. So not anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. Don't cry. You see me a trip to the pharmacy. It's fine. Really? (laughs) I'd like to reassure you. Some of you seem maybe uncomfortable. I said none of that out loud because I wanted to (laughs) do my job. I stayed calm. I excused myself to the bathroom and I cried into my empty Doritos bag like a professional. I will have oh. you know. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to end on this. Um, I uh, am currently uh, co-directing a Diary of Van Frank um, with high schoolers, obviously. Hopefully that's obvious. Um, not exactly a little kid show. And so I was going around. I was telling parents about it, making sure we got enough students signed up. And this one parent, I told her I was directing Diary of Van Frank and she said, oh, cool. Is that a play or a musical? (laughs) (laughs) And she was not joking, apparently. Also, Mm. not the only parent that asked me that, which is rather frightening. Mm. So now I'm writing Anne Frank the musical. (laughs) 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 Figure at least it's going to happen. At least have a Jew write it when it does, you know? I think it's going to be the best musical since Fiddler on the Roof. You guys. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a jukebox musical too. So it'll be all Beatles songs. <laughs> like Hey Jude. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> help. I mean, that's an obvious one. You got to have that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I, there's some I had made some adjustments to like, hey, you've got to hide your yarmulke away. <laughs> and then there's don't let me downstairs. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then towards the end, we'll have here comes the son of a Nazi. <laughs> it'll be a great show with very quiet dance numbers um just keep an eye out for that and we'll close out with ticket to ride thank you i've been charlotte parker thank oh you oh my god so charlotte where can we find you on social media um i'm char char par par on everything except TikTok, on that I'm Charlotte Parker comedian because I was trying to be mature or whatever. I'll oh. probably change it, but. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have any shows coming up? Uh, the, when, when is the musical coming out? The musical? I mean, I just... <laughs> oh, we haven't set a date for, <laughs> for that yet, but um, I do have a show at um, the Comedy Arena in McKinney, Texas, uh, on Friday, February 25th. That's a late night show. Um, it's going to be the Stand Up Showdown, so it's a competition. So oh, stand up fun. showdown. Cool. Yeah. So it's like two, what, just a couple comedians uh, drawing co jokes out of their pockets? What's going on? It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're back to back. We take three steps and then we have to draw the quickest. Right. No, um, it's not okay. quite as Texan as it sounds, but it will be. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so cool. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. Thank that you. was yeah. so fun. Uh and yes, I'm waiting. Uh, we gotta I think you and me will watch the musical of Anne Frank. I am I uh <laughs> oh I'm I, down for that. Oh, I, I will watch it. I will I've been watch waiting it for day. that for a long time. I am I, yes, yes. I'm I, psyched. <laughs> you know, we can I'm gonna go out and get a circumcision tomorrow just to be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I already got that, so I don't know what I'm gonna tell you. What? Oh, you're so lucky, man. I'll take two. I'll take two. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've seen the uncircumcised things. It's like, wow, I'm glad I got circumcised. Otherwise, it just looks like an anteater with a problem. That's all it looks like. I don't understand. <laughs> I think they're cute, you know? Like it's wearing a little turtleneck or a little sweater down there, you know? It's weird. It's just weird. I think so. it's cute. <laughs> oh, it's, it can be traumatizing because I remember when I took my kid to get it done and all happy and go lucky came back and screaming and crying and i think it was the holy terror at uh you know two days old and that was the end of that story um but that's just the way it goes but before i think uh the comedians tonight i want you christine to tell us what you got coming up here so shortly all right um so tonight at 10 p.m eastern standard time i will be on my channel twitch that is catbox comedy and we're going to do some riff tra tracks doing uh watching some old cartoons and then i'm on there for mondays and wednesdays as well i have other shows coming up but i'm drawing a blank right now but you can find me on <laughs> social media at christine Knowlton or go to my link tree at christine.nolton and there i am <laughs> There you go. And uh, that that's awesome. Go check that out on Twitch. I'm on there watching it with Rift Tracks. If you don't know what Rift Tracks is, just start typing up what you think's going on in the old cartoons. It is hilarious. I love it. She does a great job with that. And um, but that, after all that, I want to thank uh, everybody that was on the show tonight. Please give it up for Regina Miller, White Miller, Cardiff Parker, who just took off. I don't know where he went. Bo Johnson. Paula Maddox and Charlie Parker, and also my co-host, Christy Nolte. Let's give it up for her. You guys have all been great. And like I said, every show from This Justin News is moving to Mondays. And it's going to be the uh, oddly funny comedy block. So go stay tuned. March 7th is the kickoff date for that. Everything's getting retooled and changed around. So for me, Christine, and all the comedians, this is Ben. An oddly funny production. Thank you. This has been an oddly funny production.